The following video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN because while making this video, my computer actually broke down. So the question is, why use Surfshark and why am I currently using Surfshark? Of course, there's the added benefit of internet security that is easy to use with this nifty interface, but I can also pretend that I'm from different countries to get around copyright and licensing laws. For example, did you know that on Japanese Netflix you can watch all of JoJo's, including the newest season, Part 5? And as well as Rick and Morty? We're talking about all four seasons, we got everything here. So, instead of using a shady website that will likely destroy my computer in any second, I can just use Surfshark and get the most out of the subscriptions I'm already paying for. Basically, Surfshark VPN provides a safer internet and lets you make the most out of your subscriptions. Not to mention, they're also offering a 30 day money back guarantee policy which will let you try it and if you don't like it, you can always get it refunded. For the rest of you who thinks that this is definitely a must buy, consider using my promo code CREEPY for an 83% discount as well as 3 extra months for free. Clicking the link in the description not only supports the channel, but it also potentially gives you access to so much more of the internet that you didn't realize you had access to to begin with. So with that said, let's start the video. Tonight's presentation, although edited for YouTube, contains imagery and subject matter some may find disturbing. While our program is educational, we still feel that viewer discretion is advised. Hi guys, it's me, Julianne Hartman, and I'm so excited to present to you the full-length version of Deborah McDermott's Healing Journey. This is about her two sons that were both diagnosed with autism. They are now completely healed and living amazing lives. Check this out. Butch Hartman is going to get someone killed. I think that needs to be stated bluntly and upfront because it's true. He's a part of a group of people that I'd consider to be a cult and very separate from the rest of Christianity as a whole. Honestly, they have more in common with the Westboro Baptist Church than anything else. There are a lot of reasons why Butch is not liked by the internet as a whole and today I'm going to talk about all of it. However, after doing some digging, and probably the reason why this video took so long to make, I've discovered that Butch I Created Your Childhood Hartman is not only delusional, but he and his wife Julian Hartman have some dangerous and abhorrent beliefs that need to be called out. If you're interested in this new information that me, Blame It On George, and my good friend Bedhead Bernie discovered, go to the timestamp you see right here. However, if you're completely new and want full context to the situation and everything that led up to this moment, then watch the rest of the video. Never before have I 180'd on liking someone to hating someone so fast, but Butch has already crossed that line for me. You know, the one where you can't return from. I used to look up to the guy because he gave me inspiration. I'm from Detroit. I aspire to be in the animation industry at some point in my life and work on projects that can equally inspire other people just like Butch has. He even did animation work on American Tale, which is a movie that helped me fall in love with the medium to begin with. However, now, even saying all that, I think Butch is probably one of the most harmful content creators on this platform, just behind the people who are trying to sell bleach to cure autism, and honestly, he's not even that far off from that. So with that unfortunately said, I'm your host at Creepy Reading, and I implore you to sit back, relax, and welcome to my dungeon. Today we're presenting 5 reasons why people, including myself, hate Butch Hartman. It's still hard to believe that this whole drama started almost two years ago. And some of you may have heard everything that there is to hear, but this segment's for the uninformed. So for the uninformed, Butch had a Kickstarter they promoted using primarily his YouTube channel that had seen explosive success that same year. I even personally enjoyed many of his videos, which could be described as wholesome. Although he had seen some drama related to some of the more clickbaity content he produced. Hey guys, how's it going? Yes, that's true. Butch Hartman, Cartoon Network. How does that work? What does that mean? Okay, Danny Phantom spinoff. What would that be like? I did 53 episodes of Danny Phantom and it... 
Simply put, the biggest takeaway to get from this is that Butch was at the peak of his popularity. This was probably when the most people actually liked him on YouTube. So when he promoted Oaxis as his platform for family friendly content, people were mixed. Some thought that Butch could do great far away from Nick if given the proper funding, and the streaming service promised to be more cartoons along the same vein as Danny Phantom and Barely Odd Parents. Shows like Imagine Nathan and Elf Detective looked absolutely radical, and it would be created using talent found right here on YouTube. On the other hand, the promotional video seemed off, as though there was a weird pro-censorship message to go along with it. Just watching what you see on screen, you can probably tell that the situation is weird. Like why would you watch a film that contains a sex scene with your children? Movie and TV ratings exist, and they're a simple Google search away. Not to mention, TV guides and Netflix, th th they all allow you to figure out what you're gonna watch before you watch it. The thing that rubbed many people the wrong way is that it's a very Puritan approach to advertising the service. And many people found it problematic, if not cringy. Right before the Kickstarter closed, however, we learned something different. This wasn't a family-friendly streaming service, this was a Christian streaming service, which is completely different. It was too late though, Butch had our money and no one knew exactly what kind of Christian beliefs he would be promoting. For example, love thy neighbor and turn the other cheek are completely fine messages to be promoting and some that I personally believe in myself. However, there is a subsect of Christians who do believe in anti-gay and anti-science positions that could be promoted here on this site specifically to children. And to make it worse, we, uh, the people who supported him, might have made it a reality. I want to quickly state here that I have no problems with Christianity as a whole. There are so many different beliefs and views held across all various denominations that judging Christians as a block isn't necessarily fair. Personally, I prefer to judge people based on their actions and their own beliefs as opposed to trying to typecast them on some sort of preconceived notion about what they might believe. So with that said, how does, well, Church play into Butch's campaign? The only thing we knew at that time is that Butch was attending churches specifically targeting evangelical Christians, and that's where a sizable portion of the money came from. It was these churches. Like from what I understand, a little more than half the money was donated by churches specifically for the purposes of promoting Christianity and some sort of message that Butch wasn't talking about yet. But uh, I got to hear him speak and he was talking about the seven mountains of influence. When he got to the mountain of entertainment, my heart just leapt out of my chest. And I turned to my wife and I said, it's us. I don't know anybody out there that's going to take it other than me. I've navigated the world of Hollywood as a Christian. My point is my work has touched people's hearts because it has the gospel inside of them. It's like a Trojan horse. I have Christ inside of me, and Christ is inside my show. You can never hear about Christ in my show, but you feel him. If Butch Hartman wanted to make a Christian streaming service, then he is allowed to do that. However, here's the problem. He didn't tell people it was a Christian streaming service. And maybe some people weren't cool with trying to promote a religion that they personally didn't believe in. And I can't blame people for feeling that way. Hell, I felt that way. So it's two or so years later on what has happened with Oaxis in that two year interim. Well, there's a website where you can directly email Butch and his friends that has laid dormant for months now. He made this trailer where he just straight up steals footage from various shows and movies that I'm 100% sure he has no right to use. I mean, how the hell does he get the right to use Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse? $268,000, two years, and no updates for one of those years, and here is where we are at. 
He's currently looking for capital, which was not mentioned on the Kickstarter at all, which is like those backers do deserve to know what's going on and what you're planning on doing. This has led Butch Hartman to leaving social media for several months after the whole information got out. He's absolutely refused to respond or acknowledge anything in the situation, nor has he apologized about how Oaxis was handled. And right now, it seems that Butch is looking for a huge amount of money to continue the project. So, in reality, Oaxis is dead with no real future to speak of, like many other Kickstarter failures. We will later learn, however, that this might actually be a good thing. And perhaps it never really should have reached the light of day to begin with. Remember when I said Oaxis is supposed to have original animations along the same lines of his old content produced by people found right here on YouTube? Well, the animated productions he had made up until this point were all produced by a YouTuber called The Ink Tank, also known as Kuro the Artist. Kuro admitted that he hadn't done many animations before Butch asked him to, but he had learned a lot from doing videos like the Fairly Odd Parents anime, which, as an aside, was coincidentally made and produced around the same time the SpongeBob anime was blowing up. Butch and Kuro were publicly known to work with each other, and Kuro was a driving force behind many of these popular videos. This was until Butch suddenly stopped all productions related to the work that Kuro was assigned to. That would normally be fine, however, Butch and Kuro had a contract that stated if the project was cancelled under any circumstances, Kuro would be paid the full amount, which was around $1,400. Kuro produced storyboards, limited animation, all synced to SFX and audio, which as someone who's done stuff like that before, I should tell you is tough and time-consuming work that is worth way more than $1,400. When Kuro submitted the work he had done for review, he got no response from Butch. Instead, a third party responded for him. Unsurprisingly, Butch remained silent and sent Blueberry forward to speak for him, as he had this to say. Bullet point one, the character designs and illustrations you sent to us were only ever unsolicited, per my records. Your deal on Imaginathan was for animation, and this was communicated to you in writing on multiple occasions, as well as in plain language in your deal. That is incorrect, and I have many emails from Butch detailing how he wants me to go about the production for the animation. You can't just make animation. It's not just like you push a button and make Pinocchio. Right, Butch? Basically, despite doing all this work for Butch and holding a working relationship with him for the better part of four years, despite Butch getting $250,000 specifically for projects just like this, Butch Hartman refused to pay him or even talk to him. In order to pretend that the contract was not completed on Kuro's part, Butch or someone in his company removed all the files from their shared Google Drive. Even if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, this goes beyond a simple misunderstanding at best, and it falls directly into the realm of malicious conduct. Once again, Butch is trying to withhold information from people in order to make himself look better. The man got quarter of a million dollars for projects just like this, and he's refusing to pay out the heavily discounted quote that he himself agreed to. Even after weeks of sustained harassment, Butch would not publicly comment on this, which, as you can tell, is a reoccurring theme. Luckily, due to the reach of Kuro's video and months of community support, days upon days of spamming every video and social media Butch has, and the potential of a legal suit almost being levied against him. Butch finally paid Kuro, and a representative from the Noog Network, one of Butch's failed projects, apologized. Over the course of five or so years Butch had his YouTube channel, he's talked at length about his history of Nickelodeon and other projects. During this period of time, Butch Hartman has taken credit for and claimed responsibility for all the shows that you loved as a kid. Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, and Bunsen is a Beast in specific. 
Never once has he talked about the room of writers that are always credited at the end of every episode. Never did he talk about the other animators who work their hardest to bring these projects to life, or any of the behind the scenes help he has had. The most he's ever really done was throw Mary Kay Bergman under the bus, talk about Guy Moon, and Tara Strong. Although, we'll get to those clips later. Tara Strong and Guy Moon seem to be the only people that he ever talks about in relation to his show, despite the fact that many of the most beloved and most viewed episodes of the various projects he's worked on were written by people other than Butch or had other contributing members that were key to bringing them to life. But Butch still takes primary credit for all of it. Furthermore, he also lied about how he had handled many hypothetical situations and controversies happening in and around the cartoon industry. For example, when Teen Titans Go was getting mass criticism for rebooting the Teen Titans franchise, despite how well the original show did and the cliffhanger it ended on, Butch made a video saying that he would never do that to one of his shows. Keep in mind, this is after he added Sparky the Dog, Poof, and Chloe Carmichael to his shows. Just about all these characters face criticism and were not loved by the people who enjoyed Fairly Odd Parents, and also were only added because network interference forced him to do so, much like with Teen Titans Go. If this guy didn't make Teen Titans Go, then someone else would have, because that's what Cartoon Network wanted. The biggest point I'm trying to make here is that Butch isn't someone who stands up on his own morals and is willing to leave a project because it doesn't fit his own artistic vision, but rather is someone who's willing to capitulate to the demands of a network. Which is completely fine, we all need to make a paycheck somehow, but you could just admit that, Butch, instead of just outright lying. And speaking of outright lies, Butch has been pissing off people in the Danny Phantom community particularly because he stated that ghosts in the show were not actually ghosts, but in fact otherworldly monsters and creatures that came from the not-so-ghost zone ghost zone with no connection to human spirits, and that Danny was a good Christian boy that aligns with his current Christian values, despite the fact that the show never really had any sort of Christian or theological angle to go on. After all, it was just a Saturday morning cartoon that had some good, fun, running plot lines that, honestly, a lot of people in the Danny Phantom community are starting to doubt that Butch ever had any involvement in, which is what led to the abysmal fourth season. Honestly, a lot of this just has to do with Butch Hartman's douchey personality. But I wouldn't really just go ahead and talk about all this. A lot of this drama I'm talking about seems petty, and normally has no bearing and doesn't need to be brought up in a video like this. Unless if it went deeper. Butch doesn't just take credit for other people's writing and stuff related to his own shows, but since he left Nickelodeon and started doing commissions on the side, he has straight up stolen artwork and traced over it, then proceeded to sell it to people. In a now infamous tweet by Daft Pina that has gained 84,000 likes, 24,000 retweets, and 1.9 million watches as of the writing of the script, it was proven that Butch traced a commission. For those who don't know what a commission is, or why this is absolutely fucking disgusting, a commission is when you pay someone money to do a task, in this case art. It costs 200 plus dollars to have Butch draw for you, so when you pay 200 dollars to have someone else steal the work, it shows. So this character is not drawn in Butch's style. This is a character drawn in an anime style done by someone completely different that Butch has traced and colored. He's directly profited off of the work of other people while not contributing anything. Not to mention, a lot of the art he has posted in recent years looks heavily referenced or traced from posing to color to just everything. But that's just a little bit harder to prove, and I don't have the time to go through every work he's ever traced. But he's done it once, so why wouldn't he do it again? Considering this man has been an animator for 20 plus years, and the fact that animation straight up is just a job where you redraw the same thing over and over and over again but slightly different to create the illusion of movement, it's sad that we are catching him stealing artwork. It's not only ironic, but it proves that at this point he just doesn't care. And maybe that's the saddest thing about all this. The works of art this guy has contributed to are genuine works of art. And the fact that he doesn't care about that legacy at all, and is willing to throw it away for some sort of sinister agenda that we're definitely going to get into later, might just be the most heartbreaking thing about it.
This is disgusting, and I mean that in every sense of the word. If darker subject matter related to self-harm or anything like that can make you uncomfortable or trigger unpleasant memories, then listen to my intro and click off the video now. But for the rest of you, Butch Hartman does not take depression and other mental disorders at all seriously. If you're an introvert, it's a very selfish thing to be, and here's why. Because it's all about you, you're self-centered. You don't want to get out of yourself and go like, well, maybe I could communicate with these people. Uh, well, I'm just an introvert, I'm gonna sit over here and people have to figure out what I'm thinking. Mm. Okay. Can we go back to uh, the teen suicide for a moment? Because we've all been concerned about on teen suicide because the statistics are staggering. So when we look at the arts and entertainment mountain, mm -hmm. what are some things that are contributing to that today? And how will what you're bringing for program, how are you seeing that to help with that issue? We really think it, it just comes down to influence. And it's the influence these kids are receiving, whether it's, I don't care what platform it's from, it's from something. And like she was saying, if you don't control what your children are watching or what you yourself are watching, I've seen grown adults get changed because of the things they're watching. It's sure. what it, 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 it starts to affect their family, it starts to affect who they are. Mm -hmm. And if you don't watch that, if you don't protect that, it, it's gonna affect you and all of those around you. And people with the suicide don't even understand that, okay, they, they commit the suicide. Influence. They're being influenced by that. There are some shows on TV now that promote teen suicide. And after hearing what he was saying about, uh, like people struggling with legitimate issues, like diseases and mental disorders, and trying to downplay it as if it's something you can just easily get over, that that was the last straw for me. Hearing him say all that was like going up to one of those students who I've worked with and saying, "Hey, everything we're doing right here, keeping you away from your parents, putting you through this program, trying to get you." Uh, resituated and dealing with all these struggles, it's nothing. It means nothing. The only thing you need to do is just pray. And if it's not working, just pray harder. All this, it's nonsense. And that was that's just incredibly insulting. Kids today, they have no purpose. There's depression. There's suicide. Constant exposure to corrupt social media and entertainment is a, prior, a primary contributor to this crisis. I know kids who have committed suicide. When I grew up, kids had a hard time, they got through it. Suicide was never even thought about. Where's that coming from? This is why it actually took so long for me to make this video. Call me selfish, but when I heard this, it triggered something in my brain and I got irrationally angry, which I didn't want to be in this video. I didn't want to just sit here and yell into a microphone about a person who quite clearly deserves it because that would defeat the purpose of the message. This is just such an asinine statement that, as someone who's seen multiple people over the course of the last couple years alone end their lives tragically, they said issues outside of their own control because they were scared to get help. Because people like Butch, who has a massive audience and could use that influence to actually help people, or at the very least stay out of it so that they don't make people like me have to work harder just to counter what he's doing. But that's not the end of it, unfortunately. Butch has no respect for the people who may be introverted or struggling with mental disorders that are completely out of their control. These people need help. They need to understand that it's okay to ask and where to look. There is so many online resources, and yeah, you could think that maybe he wasn't thinking about looking it up, but when you're talking about a human life that was ended awfully, that is the least you could do. He has no excuse, and unfortunately, it gets worse, because this belief, these absolutely disgusting ideas, do not just stem from ignorance. They stem from an incredibly toxic belief. A belief that I'm about to get into. I want to take focus away from Butch as a person and the explicit actions he's done and talk about his beliefs since no one seems to really understand exactly where they came from, why they're so strange, or once you go down that rabbit hole, how strange it actually gets. But once you do, his bizarre speeches at church suddenly take a far more sinister tone. 
Butch's church, the Bethel church, is nothing short of blasphemous, at least in the eyes of other Christian denominations, and simply put, a lot of their beliefs are just not found within scripture itself. And the community operates very similarly to, say, a cult would operate, like the Church of Scientology. The biggest difference between Scientology and Bethel is that Bethel runs a massive Christian music label, one of the biggest, known as Bethel Music. So instead of conning people out of their money, which they do, and on a pretty bad scale, but just not as bad as Scientology, they instead use their profitable music label to do a lot of the legwork for them, which has gotten them a lot more money considering their size. Just in the last year alone, they uploaded a video that broke over 100 million views. So the Bethel Church is a mega church that has a lot of money, but what do they actually believe? This is where things get a little messed up. Their core beliefs center around two main concepts which are undivorceable from the Bethel Church. If you don't believe this, you're not a Bethelite. So with that said, belief number one. Jesus won't come back for the rapture unless seven metaphorical mountains are conquered, which are religion, family, education, government, media, arts, and business. Basically, they advocate for their specific sect of religion to be a central aspect in everyone's life and be one of the only aspects in everyone's life. This puts Oaxus into context. It's not about having more family media and that more family media should exist. It's more about how other media should not exist, which definitely puts the trailer into a better context. It now kind of makes sense why they're freaking out about seeing a horror movie in the channel guide. This pisses me off even further than that because they're basically saying that shows like BoJack Horseman as well as games like Night in the Woods and Lisa the Painful simply just should not exist because in the eyes of the Bethel Church, if it doesn't really fit in with their very specific Puritan values, you shouldn't be consuming it because according to people like Butch Hartman, it could actually make you kill yourself. Which it doesn't even end there because it only gets worse. Belief number two, Jesus will cure anything, and I mean anything, if you pray and have enough faith. This is different from your traditional faith healing, which I already covered in my scams that went way too far video. Instead of getting on stage, slapping actors, and then yelling, you're healed, Bethel believes that you can cure anything with enough faith and prayer. And that doesn't need to come from a pastor either. Although pastors in this religion are uniquely skilled in the sense that they can also heal other people because their own faith is so powerful that they can straight up raise the dead. Healing is actually a central aspect of this religion, and unfortunately, this part isn't really talked about in the public sphere that much. That's why many of you may have seen this image on Twitter and went, wait, what the hell, they're curing autism now? That's because Julian Hartman is also the founder of the Healing Journeys Conference, a conference where people can meet up and share their stories of how they were healed. Considering Julian Hartman is the champion for the Healing Journeys conferences and is the main driving force behind creating the videos, I was just kind of curious. What was her story? What made her so passionate about this pseudoscience? Julianne was both a fitness instructor and the wife of a Hollywood producer, but neither exercise nor a fast-paced LA lifestyle could keep her from the fear that took root in her life at childhood. This fear eventually took the form of fibromyalgia, an incurable disease that causes widespread muscle pain, fatigue, and mood swings. This is the healing journey of Julianne Hartman. The only problem, if you asked her back in 2011, several of the details change. For example, did you know that in an article produced by the same people who made that video, Julian Hartman never mentions once fibromyalgia, but instead claims that some of her symptoms are very similar to Nikki Ochenski, who was described as having one of the most popular stories to come out of Butch's ministry. Instead, Julian claims that the church helped her feel free of depression, anxiety, and other mental triggers that can cause panic attacks. 
Julian also describes having general depression after losing her job as a fitness instructor, and lists that as a lead source of her mental anxiety and depression as an adult. The most damning thing, however, is that she expresses a distrust for doctors, a willingness to diagnose herself on the internet, and a unwillingness to take medicine at all. My mom has fibromyalgia, and when I saw this video, read these statements, and saw this article, all kinds of red flags started to flare up in my head. You don't get fibromyalgia from being depressed. Depression is a symptom of that disorder. If you're unable to sleep, your muscles are spasming, and you look like hell every day, yeah, you're gonna be a little depressed. Fibro is also not an autoimmune disorder like it says on her invitation to the Healing Journey's Day of Worship, and based on what I've seen from her past and what I've seen of this next clip, I don't think she's ever even seen a proper doctor to get diagnosed. $300,000 on alternative doctors, holistic doctors. They just kept saying, we don't know what to do. Here, take this pill. Here, take this. This went on for three years. According to Julian's own words, she spent $300,000 on alternative and holistic medications, which mind you, is already a far cry away from the tens of thousands of dollars she stated she spent in the 2011 article we already covered. So either Julian got more treatment after she was already cured in 2011, or she's lying about some of these numbers. Furthermore, if alternative medicine worked, it would just be called medicine. And holistic medicine sounds fine if you only read the Wikipedia, but in reality, it's mostly just expensive sugar pills. The answer may surprise you. What is homeopathy? It's taking a medicine that really works and diluting it down well beyond Avogadro's limit, diluting it down to the point where there's none of it left. Julianne Hartman never accurately describes what fibromyalgia is. She never mentions it in her first article, and in that article she states that she's unwilling to take medications that doctors prescribe and that she's willing to diagnose herself using the internet alone due to that mistrust. She's also never talked about the specialists required to even make a diagnosis to begin with. So. If they're willing to turn depression into fibromyalgia, what else are Julian and Butch Hartman willing to lie about? And unfortunately, so far as we've seen quite a lot, it doesn't end there. Butch and Julian Hartman partnered with a pastor known as Andrew Womack, who says stuff like this. That it pleased him to sacrifice his son for us. And again, not just for the forgiveness of your sins, but so that your body could be healed. You know, I told you about my son being raised from the dead, my wife being raised from the dead. I've seen many people raised from the dead. If somebody was to fall over dead here today and I said, well, I've seen people raised from the dead, I'm gonna pray and praise God, we'll see them raised from the dead. Most of you'd be right with me, amen. You'd clap, amen. But you know where I'd lose the majority of you? I'd say, all right, if you believe it, you come up here and pray for them. This pastor, Andrew Womack, belongs to the Greater Bethel community, which of course is known for trending on Twitter last December for, and I kid you not, trying to resurrect a dead toddler for six days straight. I don't think I need to say this, but this failed. Her parents believed that if enough people on Twitter prayed for their kid, she would wake up. And so, hashtag wake up olive started to trend, with many people thinking that this toddler was in a coma or about to undergo surgery. The Bethel Church also promoted gay conversion therapy and even sold their own brand of conversion therapy on campus. Not much footage of this exists, however, they did actively oppose gay conversion therapy legislation in California and is currently behind the hashtag changed movement. Both Butch and Julian are a part of this group, and this group is responsible for getting people to stop their medical treatments in favor of faith alone. According to Andrew Womack and his ministry, he has a perfect record, but after doing some research, I did find this testimonial. I attended Bethel Church for nine years, 1969 until 1978, age 12 until age 21. That's when I left Reading. 
I was 12 when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and became a born-again Christian at Bethel Assembly of God Church. I had a total immersion baptism by Pastor Earl Johnson. Apparently, we didn't believe strongly enough because without our medications, our seizures quickly resumed with a vengeance, which was distressing, especially through those self-conscious teen years, because those episodes were damn ugly and difficult to conceal. If Jesus is so good at healing, why was this Sunday school teacher still wearing glasses? According to the church, the faith healing thing only works if you believed it worked. Otherwise, you're going to die or your disease might get worse. And if you die anyway, then it's your fault for not having enough faith. This is so backwards and it's only a step away from selling an actual panacea like MMS or B17. Whether you're talking about the act of grave soaking, which is just disrespectful, or misrepresenting mental disorders, then pretending to cure them, while discouraging going to an actual doctor and getting real help, I have to say, these people are awful. Considering the Bethel Church practices necromancy, they're also offensive to pretty much every other form of Christianity. The man who created the Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom now lies on the internet about medical problems and wants to actively bring the end of the world under a pro-evangelical Christian, anti-gay, anti-science, pro-abuse message. I don't think there's anything family-friendly about that, and beyond this, I don't think anything else can be said. Every time I see that smile Butch has, I don't think about the smiles he's created. I think about the people he's promoted, how they hurt others with their false hope and dangerous spiritual beliefs, that men like Peter Popoff, Andrew Womack, and other faith healers before them were able to manipulate for profit. It's hard for me to tell you this. He was walking on aluminum crutches that were very worn, rather bent. <clears throat> His legs were terribly twisted. And the kid came walking over to pass by us, and his parents were behind him, weeping copiously. The father saw me, and he took me aside, and he said, and the, the cameraman rushed over, and he said, we've been to five of his healing services now, and he always puts us behind the rope. And we drove 800 miles today to be at this service. And the little man with his crutches, he, he waved to his father. He said, we're going now. The cameraman turned to me and he said, I can't do this. And I said, fine, we won't do it. And the book that I wrote, The Faith Eaters, as I said, is dedicated to this little kid. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having faith, but faith healing? It does not work. It's designed to manipulate that faith and turn it into something that it's not. People lose everything, and I mean everything, because what is a savings account to one more Christmas with dad or grandma? I could go deeper, but that's beyond the scope of this video. However, I feel like I can leave on an important message that Butch really needs to learn. Anyone, and I mean anyone can be fooled, even skeptical people and scientists can be fooled by a magician and have before. These people are not in the business of faith, but rather in the business of theft. They create a system that's designed like one-way emotional barbed wire. It's not to keep us out, but it's to keep us in. I've seen this firsthand. My uncle, for example, was a part of the Bethel Church, and I can tell you I grew up with him. He's not an idiot. In fact, I used to look up to him as one of the most worldly minds in my circle. And it hurts that with enough tragedy and manipulation, anyone can find themselves on the wrong side of history. So keep an eye out and always be willing to admit that you're wrong and always strive to be a better person. If you're in one of these communities, the best thing you can do is leave. And if you don't think you can do that, well, there's always a bunch of online resources that are available to you. And if you have any family or friends outside of the community, that can always help too. 
Hey, it looks like you made it to the end of another really long video. If you made it this far, please consider giving a like, comment, or a subscribe, because all that really does help the channel. But for the rest of you, I apologize for my lack of uploading. I know it's been a while, but honestly, I've been dealing with a lot of stress, anxiety, and depression. This video has kind of put me on an emotional roller coaster, but because in October, we're going to be releasing shockingly disturbing video games, Volume 2, just in time for Halloween. I'd also like to thank Jameson Boaz as well as the other editors for helping out this video. The extra narrator in this video is actually the metal voice for Retsuko and is doing his own indie music which you can find linked in the description below at Bandcamp. And finally the patrons, and if you are a patron and I happen to miss you, feel free to message me on Discord and I'll make sure to get you in on the next video. So with that out of the way, add a whopping $100 we got Momo McGain, which I'm sorry if I got the name wrong but seriously dude, thank you and you're really helping me channel out. At $75, we got Tara Workman. Thank you for supporting me as long as you did. Really, thank you. At $50, we got William Hyatt, who is, I believe, new. And at $20, we got Alani, Seuss Party, Zane. At $15, we got Giblet. And at $10, we got Eddie Toxpin and Nina Smith. The rest are on screen now. Any little bit helps, and the Patreon really is what I use to pay editors and help with the music for the channel so that we can maintain an extensive library of original music specifically for the channel, which will be being released publicly hopefully very soon, maybe in October. And with that said, I'm your host at Creepy Reading, and I'm here to wish you a beautiful life.